Hey there. Happy Saturday. It's Shannon Graham Cornell and I'm coming to you today to talk a little bit about organizing hobby and craft spaces. So yesterday we were up in our guest bedroom and we were looking at the IKEA Algot shelving system that we use to organize our um, homebrew equipment. And uh, what I wanted to talk to you about today was the considerations and the process that we went through to be able to leverage that system to organize the, um, the equipment that we need for our hobby. Um, so we're going to be talking about kind of some organizing principles that you can use when you're looking at your hobby or craft spaces. And one of the reasons I really like hobby and craft spaces, and I think they're so much fun, is they're a little bit different than the other spaces in our homes. So part of what a hobby or craft space is designed to do is to store um, equipment that you're going to be using to achieve an activity that usually has a pretty defined process. Um, it may be a little more complicated than an, another activity you might be doing in your home. So you've heard me talk before about trying to figure out when you are organizing a space, trying to figure out what activity it is you're going to be doing in that space. Uh, in this case, you may not even be doing the activity in the place where you store the equipment. So it's, but in addition to that, so you might have your craft or your hobby materials stored in one room, you do the activity in another room, unless you're really lucky and you've got, you know, a room that's all set up that can support both the, the storage and the, the, um, the, the process or the storage and the activity and the craft, but there's still, as you are working through whatever it is you're doing, you may need materials in a certain order. And so hobby and craft spaces need to support more of a process um, than our other spaces. When you go out to you know your garage or you're in your kitchen uh, or you're in your you know linen closet, the idea of sorting um, like items with like items or categorizing like items with like items is is really helpful. You know, you put all your screwdrivers together, you put all your measuring cups together, you put whatever, because when you need an, a screwdriver or a measuring cup, you can go and you can get that from that particular category of item. But with crafting or hobby um, uh, rooms or spaces, you actually may need to use the same, um, and again, I'm thinking about this in terms of a process, the fact that there's a process with your, with your craft or hobby, you may need to be able to access the same category of item in different steps of your process or different phases. So, you know, you may have, um, you know, uh, uh, different places along your, um, uh, you know, when you're executing whatever it is you're working on, sewing a quilt or building a puzzle or, um, you know, doing um, scrapbooking, you may need different um, equipment at different phases. You may need the same equipment at different phases, but you can um, uh, think about organizing your materials in order to map to those phases. So an example that uh, I want, wanted to, to talk to you about is our, uh, our home brewing equipment and how we use this idea of category, categorizing by steps in a process as an additional layer of organizing, aside from just putting like items with like items. So um, I wanna walk through kind of that. 
And to, to help with um, you know, my example, just to, for those of you who don't know a whole lot about home brewing, it is a very, um, very heavy process, uh, very process driven hobby. So there are multiple phases to brewing beer. There are, and those phases have to happen on separate days that are often weeks apart. Um, and they have their own, each phase has its own equipment set. And in some cases, the equipment is specific to that phase. In other cases, the equipment, same equipment is used in multiple phases. The other interesting thing is that because brewing beer can take, you know, four to six to eight weeks, depending on what it is you're brewing, you may not repeat a phase again um, you know, until your next batch, which may not happen for months. So remembering what it was you needed at any particular time can be really, um, can be tricky. Um, and in our case with the, the home brewing, we brew in our kitchen, but we don't have room in our kitchen to store our equipment. So the equipment gets stored in the guest bedroom that you saw yesterday and that we were using the Algot shelving um, you know, to help us store that equipment. So it's on a different floor It's in a, of our house. It's in a different room. The other thing, too, that you need to consider with hobby, with hobby or craft equipment, and we definitely need to consider this for our home brewing, is that we need to expect that there will be new equipment, that there will be growth, there will be change in the equipment that we have. So, again, as I, I've, I've said before, I'll say it again in this case, we need to be flexible or, the, or our, our solution needs to be flexible in order to accommodate for that. So you saw the, um, what the, the, the room looked like yesterday. And I will, when this post goes um, official on, uh, on Facebook, I will add photos of what, our, um, what the storage space looks like now, what it looked like in the version prior and uh, I'll also include a picture of kind of how I sorted things out. But in the home we lived in before, the storage space for our home brewing equipment was actually on the same floor as, um, and actually just kind of right around the corner from the kitchen. So uh, we were, were able to, we basically stored things in, you know, great big tubs, you know, like the big long tubs, kind of like you'd use for under bed storage. Um, and you know, larger bins. And that was fine for that space. But when we moved into this home and we decided that we wanted, we were gonna be, we were gonna need to store the equipment on the, the upstairs level, transporting these big bins up and down the floors, you know, or up and down the stairs was not, not fun. Um, the, you know, the bins were long, they were heavier because we had a lot of stuff in it. So we knew that the way we had things organized was not going to work in this new home. And the other challenge too, was that the room that, or the, the closet we were storing it in had, um, you know, the typical, you know, one shelf hanging rod situation. And so, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, using that space with the way that we had the bins currently set up. It just wasn't efficient at all. We had a lot of wasted space. Um, so what I started out with initially was realizing that in our old home, pulling out all of the equipment and things were stored, you know, like with like. So we had, you know, siphons together and hoses together and, and, and um, uh, airlocks together what we would do is we'd pull everything out, all the bins out, and then we would pick and choose what we needed for that activity, um, depending on the phase of brewing we were in. Well, in this home, that just wasn't practical because we were pulling everything out and bringing it all downstairs and trying to pick through and find the things we needed. So that's when I realized that I needed to add a second layer of organizing into this and include the brew phase as part of that. So I pulled everything out um, of their original containers and I organized them by brew by brewing phase. So there's usually for a typical home brew phase, there are four distinct phases. And then there is there are some pieces of equipment that you use in every phase. So what I ended up doing was, you know, everything that 
was on you know yeast propagating day was in this pile and brew day or you know the boil day was this pile and etc and then I had a, a category that was I use these things no matter what phase we're in so I ended up with five categories and um, of both small pieces of equipment, little things, you know, things that fit in the palm of your hand and bigger things like, you know, six gallon brew kettles. Um, and so I had, you know, little and big pieces of equipment in each category. But then I also realized that it would be a lot easier to be able to just bring the things downstairs that I needed for a particular phase if I actually bought duplicates of pieces of equipment. So there were, in some cases, I needed a, a particular piece of equipment in two phases. So I ended up, we ended up getting a duplicate because that way I could store one in phase one, the you know, phase one pile and another one in phase two. And it just made it easier because I wasn't having to pull things out um, of other days buckets or you know other days phases as I was working. I knew that I wanted to use baskets, um, smaller baskets, not, not the big baskets. And you saw them when we looked at the closet yesterday. Those are the black baskets that are um, vertical on the, the one side of the closet. I knew I wanted to have a basket for each phase plus a basket for my stuff that I use all the time. So the idea was we would bring out the large equipment, we would bring out for a phase, we would bring out a basket for a phase, and then we would bring out another basket that was everything, you know, the, the stuff that we needed um, uh, for, that we used, we used in every phase. So two baskets and some large equipment, and I would have what I needed for that phase. And that was it. Everything else stayed put. Uh, so we used the original closet, the original setup that way. We had the baskets across the shelf on the top, and that worked fine. And then we had stacks of equipment on the floor. Um, you know, things stacked one on top of each other, things nested inside each other, and that worked okay. It wasn't fabulous, but it worked okay. The problem was I would forget when we would we'd pull everything out, but then I would forget what it was I had nested inside other things. And so every time I was putting stuff away, we were having to remember, now where did we put this? You know, did we stick this in that paint, you know, that, that bucket or that bucket or whatever? Uh, plus there was um, all of the baskets for the phase were over our heads. So we were, were constantly pulling down, you know, baskets over our head that had, in some cases, some heavy equipment in it. So that wasn't really practical. So we, but we lived with that for a while. And we're like, well, we love the organizing by phases. Loved that. But we needed to solve our product problem. Enter into the scene, the Algot IKEA system from Ikea. So we knew that we would be able to um, reduce the amount of stacking we were doing. But then I could also label the heck out of that space. So that would solve a lot of our problems. So, you know, we, we use the Algot planning or the, the IKEA planning tool for the Algot. We measured and actually did even little like paper cutouts to scale of our equipment and figured out what would nest in what. And between the planning tool and the paper cutouts, we're able to design what the shelving system would look like. Um, and then when I did my labeling, I included not only, so on each shelf, I would have, you know, this is where the um, sparge cooler and strainer would be put, but the strainer was nested inside the large cooler. So I, ha I was not only labeling what the big object was that I was setting on the shelf and the thing that would be visible, but I also labeled the thing that was nested inside it. And that made my life so much easier because when, when that particular phase was over, I was able to then bring the, the equipment back to the room, nest things appropriately and put them away where they belonged. And also that way I wouldn't lose track of any of, you know, any of the equipment. Um, so, you know, the idea of when you're thinking about your craft space or your hobby space, think about is this something, is this a space that would be helped if you organized it by process or by steps in the process? 
not just put like with like. And it may be that for your craft space, depending on a number of factors, that like, you know, all of your scissors in one spot, all of your paper in one spot, all of your, um, uh, you know, uh, fabric in one spot, that may make perfect sense. But can this lay, this idea of organizing by steps in a process, can that add even better clarity, better organization, so that as you are working through your phases of your process, you've got the things you need for that particular step right at hand, and you're not having to go through and pick out from other categories the things that you need for that particular step. So consider that when you're looking at organizing your hobby room or your craft room. Also, and I know, I and I've said this before, every time I surprise you by telling you to buy extra stuff, that's always a shocker because I'm always trying to tell you to you know declutter, get rid of everything. In this case, I'll tell you what, I use a siphon in two parts of a process, uh, two parts of the brewing process and I own two siphons. They aren't expensive, they were maybe $10 a piece, but I'm telling you, having the siphon in but you know, phase two, that phase two bucket, and that phase four bucket was a game changer because I'm not having to, oh, I gotta go get this item out of this phase. So in this case, it really did help to have duplicates of some things that would just make it easier and cleaner and simpler to do that organizing by step um, layer. Consider transportability. Again, if you are uh, needing to move your supplies either from a closet to a table or out of a drawer to a table or from a closet or drawer to a whole different level of your house, containing your items in, in something that is easily transportable um, if you're going to have to navigate, you know, like I do, I have to navigate the skinny stairwell of a townhouse. You're not going to want to put your, your, um, supplies in, you know, a container that's uh, like an underbed container that may be like seven inches high and four feet wide. Believe me. And that's how one, one of the, the containers we had left over from our prior uh, prior home but we that's what we had so we that's what we were trying to deal with in a townhouse stairwell i don't recommend it so consider you know where are you moving this to and how simple does it need to be moved this is definitely an area that i recommend labeling i don't always use labeling i, I tend to use labeling if somebody else is going to be using the space um, and they need to understand my system um, if it's just a space I'm using and I, you know, and it's simple enough to remember, I, I don't usually label. Um, but in this case, labeling makes a big difference, especially if you don't do your hobby or your craft um, a lot and you may not remember where things, where things belong. And then again, in this area in particular, be prepared for the need to expand, the need to change, the need to adjust. You will always get new supplies. You will always get new equipment. If you're, you know, if this is a, a hobby or a craft that you're really passionate about, um, expect that you're going to make adjustments in that. And so definitely, um, and again, it's one of the reasons I really was so happy with the, the Algot system is that as we add new equipment, um, we can make adjustments if we need to. So, um, but consider that. So really think about how, what extra room do I need to leave myself? So this is also one of those areas where you don't want to pack every space you possibly can with your materials. You want to leave yourself a little bit of room um, so that you can, you can move things around or add things as you need to. So give yourself a little breathing room. So if that means that you are buying, you know, an extra storage unit of some kind, like an extra, you know, an extra like little short bookcase or something in order to give yourself a little bit of room for expansion, I highly recommend it. So those are, that's uh, the, the ideas for organizing a craft and, or hobby room. And like I said, I will post examples of what uh, the uh, sorting process looked like. Um, when I went through and pulled all the equipment out, 
uh, and sorted it by process or by step in the process. I'll show you also, I'll post a picture of what that first version in the guest room closet looked like where I had the baskets across the top and the stacks underneath on the floor. And then of course the final version um, with the Algot system. So thanks for joining me and enjoy the rest of your Saturday and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about menu planning. So uh, if you were with me a couple of days ago when we talked about how to have a well-stocked home, uh, I showed you um, my, um, my stocking list for the pantry and um, we'll talk, we'll, I'll show you how that fits into uh, some ideas for meal planning. So how to get some, get a, get a little bit of handle on what you're going to, what you're going to eat for uh, either the upcoming week or month or however long you'd like to plan for. So hopefully you can join me tomorrow for that. Uh, but otherwise, I will see you all later and have a great rest of your Saturday. Bye.